I think we're live. Hello, everyone. This is something a little bit different, isn't it? So, this is the first kind of like live stream that I've done during this quarantine period. How are we all doing this evening? Uh, a couple of big questions I need to start off with. First of all, what are we drinking on this Sunday evening? I'm going for the Blue Moon Belgian White. Terribly named beverage, but fantastically tasty. Um, right, so as you probably have guessed by the title, the big question in tonight's video is, what are we going to do when all the golf, golf courses reopen? How do we get back into golf? That's the big question in tonight's video. So get your questions in the comment section and I will be answering them as we go. Uh, I've got a few ideas that I want to kind of give to you with regards to how we can best get up and running when it comes to playing golf again. And we've got a couple of topics that we're going to talk about a little bit later on as well, including some potential new clubs that I'm going to be getting as soon as all this craziness is over. So if you are just joining, welcome. Welcome back to the channel. This is Jack Lee Golf. My name is Jack, in case you didn't know. The big question tonight, how do we get back into golf? So firstly, let me read to you the statement that was recently published by England Golf. So this is on their website. Uh, this was last updated. On the 23rd of April, last reviewed on the 24th of April. Let me just show you this. Cool. Right, so let me read to you the England Golf Guidelines. In the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak, England Golf has announced a number of key decisions relating to all of our championships and wider golfing activities. Pardon. All golf clubs and courses in England must now close. We knew this from quite a while ago. Insurance provided free to members via England Golf Affiliation Free is not valid during this period of course closure. That's unfortunate. All championship and performance events up until the week commencing 27th of July have been postponed with the revised and provisional schedule now in place. One thing that we do know is that the PGA Tour is going ahead in a couple of weeks, I think. We've also got the Tiger Woods Phil Mickelson rematch, which is super exciting. Can't wait for that. That's going to be brilliant. They've got Tom Brady and Peyton Manning involved as well, so that's going to be cool. Um, England Golf's AGM and national participation events scheduled for the spring have been postponed. That don't really affect many of us. Uh, a majority of England Golf staff have been placed on furlough as part of government's job retention scheme. Remaining staff working remotely will be available to assist counties, clubs and golfers in the weeks ahead. When it is safe for golf to return, this is the big one. England Golf will work with clubs to promote a play safe, stay safe message. Read more from you, yeah, whoever. We have not yet been contacted with regards to that. So when it comes to reopening golf courses, we are as much in the know as you guys. We don't know when it's going to happen. Hopefully, as I've been discussing with my mate who I work with, Dan, they let us know in plenty of time so that we can get like pro shops back up and sorted. We can get driving ranges sorted. We can... Uh, improve uh, this is from a Kingswood perspective we can improve the uh, state of affairs in a way that it's almost like a bit of a reopening so we want it to be a, a better experience for the golfer than what it was when we had to close unfortunately uh, or fortunately uh, in that regard so I want to hear your guys opinions on this in the comments below how are we going to get back into golf what is what are the things that we can do in order to speed this process along because that's a big thing for me i want to get back and cracking as soon as possible don't get me wrong it's been nice having this time off to recharge the batteries and whatnot but we do want to get back to it now um right let's have a look at some questions in the chat craig how late am i and the course is looking brilliant can't wait to get back to cutting glove me neither mate i think chris and the other green staff uh tom and keith I've been working tirelessly to get it to a point where it's been as good as I've seen it since I started working there. Obviously, we've not had the best weather since I started working at Kingswood, but it is looking absolutely mint at the moment. John Lumley. Hey, John. I hope you keep, uh, keep it well, mate. I'll be honest, can't see much of a problem as long as it's no more than two, uh, it, keeping it in two balls. That's a good idea. Social distancing at all times. Whole cups upside down and not touching the flags. It's a good idea. It's definitely a good idea. I think that the problem uh, lies, though, is like the staffing idea so me being in contact with so many people i'm going to kind of be reluctant to do that at such an early stage while we see death rates still climbing up i will just say before i get any deeper i don't want to get too political on tonight's video because that's not what i'm about but it, it kind of merges and, and we see a lot of gray areas with this kind of stuff at the minute but you know it's one of them i don't want to be handing money over to people that you know potentially could be in danger because one of the scariest things about this disease is that you may ha not even have the symptoms but have the virus and it's just it's crazy we have a lack of testing in this country so you know for someone like myself i don't know how capable i am of being tested so 
it's very, very scary. But, John, I think that is a great point. I think uh, the way that I would do it personally is when you look at member golf courses where people don't have to exchange money in order to play and stuff like that. So, uh, for, for example, Higgleton, where I used to work, uh, I don't see any problem with the members going back playing doing that. But then obviously you'd still have to close bar areas, you still have to close pro shops. Um, I think if you can, office staff could work from home. But, you know, you might not have the necessary portals and on-site uh, facilities in all, in able, uh, to be able to do that, sorry. So it's such a crazy grey area at the moment. I think a lot of people are very desperate to get back golfing, which is very understandable. But you have to consider the bigger picture, which is scary, really, because I am in that boat of I want to go back playing golf on a golf course. I don't see the problem with people doing that on its own. I don't see people, I don't see a problem with people just going out there, playing golf, staying away from each other, that kind of thing. But you have to think of the bigger picture. It's like, you think about the bar when you're finishing your round before you're going out. Think about pro shops and people as myself that we're dealing with and, and just those uh, them interactions that we might not take for granted on an everyday scale. It's becoming more and more like concentrated, I think, at the moment. So scary times. Right, next up, Dean Lee, the uh, uglier brother of the two slash three. After yellow, what's the worst colour for you to wear? Decent, got that. Rich, the biggest problem will be how some golfers conduct themselves once courses are open. Definitely. I, I think we see that in uh, society <laughs> because, like, for a, a good example, my mum, right, walking the other day, my mum's not, a, a, like, a critical age of being able to contract this crazy virus, but she's, like... Uh, 61 I think now she'll kill me for saying that but there was a girl 15 years of age I think around that age walking a dog and my mum heard the girl approaching her and she's kind of gone like look around the shoulder this girl's almost barged into her and my mum says look have you not heard of this social distancing thing you need to be more concerned than what you are and this girl's just started spouting off at her and swearing and just conducting herself in the worst possible manner which is crazy so yeah rich i do think you're right i think the problem is going to be how people conduct themselves and and golfers we can be an abrupt bunch at times can't we so that is definitely going to be a concern it it seems so unnecessary that if we let these people out earlier to get back onto the golf course and they are to disrespect the rules that have been put in place there's just going to put more strain on what's happening on the bigger picture they're going to put more nhs staff under stress it's just going to make it worse one um scenario that i can see which i don't want to happen is that we let people back onto the golf courses too early it gets worse again death rates rise again and then we have to go back to a lockdown scenario i'd much rather it get to a stage where we sort it out and then we get people golfing again ryan bryson hello mate could open every other driving range bay the shop staff could put the balls in the bays and contactless payment on the way in contactless payment is a good way around it i certainly for one don't want to be dealing with cash or anything like that so that's not good but yeah great idea if we are to do it that way i think that's going to be one of the necessary measures when we do get back to it i don't think it's just going to be a case of closed to open it's going to be open but like um, john lumley said earlier two balls holes uh, in the cups upside down no touching of the flags no shaking of the hands when we're using driving ranges like said ryan uh, every other bay that kind of idea i think that's it, we're gonna have to just phase it in slowly i think Next up, John Hewitt, how can we avoid loads of golfers turning up at once uh, to play some courses that don't have a booking system? That's very, very true, John. Um, how could we get a Z around that one? It's going to be tricky, isn't it? Because, like I said, once you say to people, golf-deprived people that want to play golf, we're now allowed to play golf again. Everyone's just going to sprint to the course as quick as they can. I know Pete Marsh in the comments, oh, no, John Hewitt. He's all right, he's all right, it's John. But, yeah, I know what you mean. It's going to be a... A very strange situation well, i mean what what's the what what's the protocol are we just gonna limit it to say 50 golfers per day whose right is it to to say what golfers are allowed to play and which golfers aren't it's it's so strange i think england golf are doing a great job personally of keeping us informed um like they said on their website um when it's safe for golf uh, to return England golf will work with clubs to promote a play safe, stay safe message. So I think that's that's tapping into the idea of phasing in that kind of thing. Uh, Piers Tavener, Piers, I hope you're okay, mate. Uh, we need communication from England golf. <laughs> they should be lobbying on our behalf, but uh, ben uh, benign, very secretive. 
Yeah, it, on, on behalf of us, uh, as in people that work in golf, I think the communication has been good. It's probably more of our job to pass on the message to you guys about what is happening. But like I said, very early in the video, almost at the start of the video, we, we don't know as much as probably what you think we do. We're only, um, we all, we're only told by England Golf. So that I think the reason why people perceive that we've not... Um, we don't know as much as what we should do is because like, we, we're not in the know. It's, a, it's as simple as that, really. So I think if we were kept more well informed, then we'd be able to dish that out to the people a little bit better. Oh, we've got some uh, beef going off in the comments section. Uh, John Hewitt's gone back at Peter Marsh saying, I'm going to hit you with a shovel, Pete Marsh. And uh, Pete's uh, said, you'll miss. So some light out of banter in the comment section. Here. That's what we're all about here at Jack Lee Golf. It is a family affair. Uh, one question that I asked really early in the stream what are we drinking tonight? I'm on the Blue Moon, Belgian White. H uh, horrifically named ale, but spectacular tasting. And again, keep your comments coming in the section below. I will refer, I will keep referring to those throughout the video. Next up, uh, a question that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, and it is, what can you actually practice in the quarantine period? So I see some people making a real effort to practice as much as what they can, but what is actually effective? in this period so if you have got a driving net one thing that i will say to you is that strike and monitoring strike i.e whereabouts that golf club is coming out of the face is absolutely paramount seeing as though we're not able to see where ball flights are going that kind of stuff unless you've got a launch monitor unless you're very fortunate in that regard strike is a big one so one thing that you can do get some athletes foot spray uh, dry shampoo, anything of that kind of sort spray it on the face of the golf club and see whereabouts you're hitting it uh, if it's centred or not. I have got some good drills on my channel for locating a centred strike. So if, you, if you're finding that you're doing that and it's not coming out the middle of the golf club, head over to my channel, look at the strike videos that I have shown on that. Also, we've got chipping. So what can you practice with your uh, chipping? Again, stripping. <laughs> you can't really practice. Well, you can practice that at this time. That's funny. Um, talc is cheaper. Correct, Peter Marsh. So athletes foot spray talc and... Dry shampoo, that's, what else, that's the other thing that I said. So, chipping, what can you practice? I've been practicing my strike, similar to what I just said, and landing zones. So, set out some cones, whether it be two metres apart, three metres apart, just practice chipping into those landing zones because we all know 20 yards and under, a good way of measuring feel and that kind of stuff is by doing that kind of drill. So, that's chipping. Putting is probably the thing that you can practice the most during all this. And if you're not already, I would definitely recommend that you do so because we can practice everything. We can practice the path of your putting stroke. You strike yet again. It's a common theme between all these because it is so, so important. Um, you stroke in general. So if you are someone that, you know, you have a common miss either side, put a couple of obstacles out, ensure that you're not missing. For me, it's the right hand side of the hole. I'm a bit of a pusher. So in my practice, I've been putting uh, things on the right hand side of the hole, trying to miss it. Simple ideas like that. It's all going to add up to you being better at golf by the time we get to go back out. Right, let's head back to this comment section. Loads have just been streaming recently, so that's mint. Um, right, next question. We'll go back to Rich1980. Jack, could you give a shout out to Nugget Miller, my playing partner, and tell him any money owed from previous games is wrote off? Nugget Miller, any money that has been owed pre-quarantine is wrote off, unfortunately, mate. Hey, I don't make the rules. That's just what they are. Dean Lee, the clubs will reserve the right based on what they feel is safe unless there are proper guidelines set down. It will have to be drip fed and people will need to be patient, definitely. Patience is the biggest thing in all this, isn't it? And I hope we don't get to a stage where golfers get that aggravated that patience goes out of the window. Because if we do that, like I said earlier, I think it'll be spreading again and then we'll be back to square one and we'll be in lockdown again and then we'll be no golf. So that's not what we want. I'd rather get it right and then get back onto the course. Drip feed it slowly, but get back out there. PMR, should they abandon the Premier League, Jack? This is a superb question because, right, the two options that we've got, they abandon it and Liverpool don't win the league. Or, right, also, I need to say, I don't mind if they give Liverpool the title because then they haven't really won it, have they? And then they will forever have an asterisk next to the name. And I would absolutely love that. So there, there are two best options, I think. If they were to... I've got a feeling because of how much money is paid to the Premier League by Sky and how much it's going to cost the Premier League in um, fines if it's not played out, 
I think we're going to have to get it played, and it might be like a little bit of a summer tournament type thing. So, but best case scenario, they don't get it. Second best case scenario, they get it gifted to them. That'd be mint. John Lumley, without starting a political debate, where's the daily updates on Golf England website? Right, John, all I've done uh, in order to access the information that I read to you earlier was just type in on Google. I will read to you my exact search. Golf coronavirus. Basic, I know. Uh, and it's come up, England Golf website. Uh, first link is England Golf coronavirus COVID-19 update. So what I read to you earlier, that's all on that page there. Like I said, nothing uh, especially for the club golfer. We've been kept updated by emails, but there's not been that much information for us, uh, information for us guys either. So, not good. Lee McConville, all right, Connie. Instead of 10 minutes between tee offs, it could be 20. That's another superb idea when it comes to this like drip feeding, phasing in idea that we've got running tonight. So, superb. Off house 13, Chris Naylor, nice. That's my favourite Dublin lager. Only Dublin lager that I know, granted, but it is my favourite. Piers, Tavener, do you think there is an opportunity for golf to attract new members? It will open a lot sooner than other sports. Yeah, that is a good idea. One thing that I was talking to someone about earlier is that I, I still think that we need to change the game in order to attract a different type of person. So we see in cricket, they've done the 2020 thing. We also see in football, you've got five aside, seven aside. What I think we need to do in golf is a seven hole, bigger holes, that type of thing and get it rolling so that it only takes an hour because as you know for most of us four hours is a long time we are devout golfers obviously but for the average man that's not got that much time and he still wants a, a quick game every now and then i think that might be the way to go this could be the perfect opportunity to tap into something like that and get more people playing golf so let's see what happens with regards to that connie lima conville desperados cracking a all that i do personally prefer a corona with a bit of lime in it but i'm a bit of a beer snob right next question from craig i'm drinking a special brew and not the alcoholic type my missus does a great cuppa question for you craig how many sugars i personally have none and recently i've been impartial to a black tea which my mum thinks i'm a bit of a weirdo because of so there you go uh, Pete Marsh says, we're from Yorkshire Rockefeller. You're not wrong. And in a couple of recent videos where I've tried getting a set of golf clubs for, for £100 and under, my Yorkshireman does show in that. So, top stuff. Craig, you've put three barber signs there. I hope you're not alluding to the fact that I need a trim because I desperately do. My hair's getting long and mongy and it's not great. Luke Van Dome, big up Jack Lee Massive. If you don't yet subscribe to the Yorkshire pod, it is the best podcast in Yorkshire. Um if you just type it into YouTube, it's Yorkshire Pod and it is mint. So go watch it. They tackle some real serious topics, unlike myself. It's mint. Yorkshire Pod. Chris Bird, Luke Vando. Pete Marsh, has your rash cleared up yet, Jack? Uh, with the prescription drugs that the NHS has provided me, yes, it is slowly clearing up. Thanks for that. Did the ointment work? Like I said, it's prescription pills, not ointment. Craig, but no, relegate the mighty Aston Villa. Yeah, that's another thing, isn't it? Like, do we know what's going to happen with clubs as regards to, uh, like, relegations and stuff? I know that when it comes to lower leagues, they've suspended all lower league football. So there's a big financial impact on your smaller clubs that, that needed the money, which is crazy. One thing, can I just ask you guys, we've got 18 people watching live right now. Could you just hit that like button? Because the more likes that we get on this video, the more chance it has of being seen by more people. So if you could do that, that'd be mint. We're on one like at the minute. If we can get to 10 by the end of this video, I'll be buzzing with that. So thank you. Piers, as long as Norwich stay up, can't relegate us without the finish in the season. Yeah, there we go. I, I don't know what I think to Norwich Piers, you know. They're a funny team. I mean, we have absolutely smoked you twice this season, so I think I'd be quite um, happy for you to stay up. So, yeah, that'd be me. Six likes. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Um, Joshua Rutherford, got that chipper yet? Very well-worded question there, Josh. Thanks ever so much. Uh, the competition, the giveaway, is drawn on the 30th, which is not too long away now. It's only like four or five days away. So if you've not entered that, which I'm sure that a lot of you guys have, make sure you go and enter that big giveaway. We're giving away a Callaway PM Grime Wedge, uh, a Apollo Golf Shaft, which is worth 50 quid, and a Cleveland Wedge Analyzer. So, Joshua Rutherford, you're not guaranteed it, unfortunately, my friend, unless you're born with some dough around the side. No problem, Luke Van Dome. Uh, would you ever host a local pro-am? We nearly did at Ickleton. At Kingswood, I don't think we've quite got the facilities, um, but I would definitely love to in a future 
life. <laughs> it's just, just in the future, yeah, I, w- I won't mind doing that. To be fair, at the minute, mate, I'd much rather play one than host one. So I'm getting back into playing, I think. You didn't hear that from me, though. You heard that from someone else. Pete Marsh, serious question. Should manufacturers hold off on the new releases? I think they should, but what do you think, Pete? Are they going to? Because as we know, in this crazy industry, they are money mad. I think while a lot of people are doing online um, shopping at the minute because there's nowhere else to go, I'm surprised that we haven't seen, well, that looked weird, didn't it? I'm surprised that we haven't seen more manufacturers push this whole idea of fitting golf clubs for yourself online, which I absolutely detest. Hate that kind of stuff. So uh, should they hold off on new releases? Yes, but I don't think they will. Luke Lando, and can I be your partner? Of course you can. I don't mean to be a ball buster, but you may need an handicap to start with. They are up in it to 54, though, so we've got a chance. <laughs> Piers, <laughs> can't read that out, unfortunately, but I do hope Norwich stay up because we like playing against them. I've got Norwich colours on tonight, to be fair. So, Rich, 18 hole versus nine hole courses. Why do you think the snobbery exists between the two? And uh, the two winners mentioned some people just want a two hour knock. I know, mate, it's crazy. The biggest stumbling block I had when leaving my old course was uh, not necessarily to do with snobbery, but there is a mentality from members' courses compared to municipals, the golf course that I work at now, when it comes to things such as dress code. For me, dress code does not matter. I genuinely could not give a about uh, dress code. The big thing for me is getting more people involved in golf. The scary thing when it comes to membership-run courses, and I've seen this, is that I think a lot of members, especially on committees and stuff, prioritise their well-being over the financial well-being of that golf club. So there's such an opportunity to get people in, get people involved in playing golf. But one uh, sentence that always springs back to mind when I think about this kind of stuff is uh, a a person on a committee once saying to me, yeah, but if we get these new people in, it's going to affect my tea time. There you go. We're turning money away. Or we were, we're not anymore. Neil Clapperton, hi people, hello Neil, hope you're okay mate, hope you're staying safe. Uh, Josh Rutherford, great plug from you there, but I meant the one to practice with in my garden. Josh, I've got loads of wedges, all you need to do is come and pick one up from my house. What I'll do is I'll leave it on the drive, um, text me when you're here, and then I'll I'll see you, take the wedge, and you can take it home to chip with. But you'll need to be focusing on your rehab of your knee more than you do getting better at chipping. Dad sleep. Hello, mate. Hope you're okay. Will every day be like a weekend at the golf club? I'm very busy if courses are open whilst folks still furloughed. I think so. Uh, We've been speaking a lot tonight about the drip feeding idea and slowly getting people back onto the golf course. But if they are to do it in a way where it's a case of being closed straight to open, it's going to be absolutely crazy. And what is the worst thing to do at this time is to get people concentrated in one area i know that we have the social distancing aspect of of staying two meters away from people but it's like i'm worried to be honest with you guys i'm worried about getting back into golf because i don't pardon i don't know what procedures england golf are going to take hopefully it's all very sensible and all very well thought out i personally think we need some some more time to get us around what's happening and, and think about the best way to get us all back onto the golf course. A uh, little bit right. McCom- uh, Lee McConville, Connie, how many of those balls have you got in your garden? He comes round to mine to hit in my net. But between me and him, we have hit a couple through my net onto New Street, I think. And certainly, and I can't say certainly a minute. And certainly into the garden behind us. So I hope they're not watching this video because you've got some golf balls in your back garden. 13 likes. Thanks ever so much, guys. I said 10, 13 is buzzing. Um, next question, Josh Rutherford, what is your favourite thing about golf? This is going to sound proper wishy-washy, but it taught me manners as a young bloke. So getting into it at a real young age, you learn like etiquette, you learn how to speak to people, you learn how to conduct yourself. That's my favourite thing about golf. And I think uh, young people could do with more of that nowadays without getting too much into it. That was a boring answer, I'm sorry. Uh, to to balance out the boringness of the answer, smacking drives as far as you can. That's also my favourite thing about golf. I love whacking it far. Pete Marsh, you're a lifesaver, Jack. The wife, <laughs> the wife's watching an opera. It's brutal. I thought more people would be doing um, quizzes tonight, so I'm very happy that 20 people are watching right now. That's absolutely mint. Um, <laughs> and Pete has followed up that comment with just what the world needs: more fat women screaming. <laughs> I hope I don't get pulled off YouTube for reading that, reading that comment out, but that is funny. 
Richard Todd, hello, mate. How's it going? Hi. Uh, hey, up, Jack. Hope you are still live. I am still live, mate. Luke Van Dome, golf or football? You've got to give up one for life, watching and play. Watching and playing. Oh, my God. That is brutal. So, despite having times where I fell out with golf, I think I still prefer playing golf to football. But I absolutely love going to watch United, so that is such an hard question. I'm going to think about that and come back to it if that's okay, Luke. That's a tricky one, that. John Lumley, what's your favourite hole at Kingswood and why? I like the 18th. I think it's a right good hole. Narrow tee shot, demanding second shot if you can reach it. A green that's almost impossible to hit into, so it kind of forces you to lay up. I mean, water left. Oh, brilliant. And in winter, you can see the lodgers pass the water on the left as well, so I love 18. Paul Nicholson, 14. Yes, buzzing, mate. Thanks ever so much for the MOT that you sent me earlier. I'm slowly chipping away at it. So that's my mission for the next couple of days, that. Lee Faulkner, could uh, could allocate tea times to single members only every 20 minutes and only let more than one people play? Yeah, I mean, what's better than a two ball in this current situation? A one ball, definitely. I do like the idea of splitting tea times and making it a bit more spread out. That's a good idea. Blades or Man U will finish above in league. Uh, current standings, I think it does. I, I mean, I hope I'm not horrifically wrong in that. I think we're fifth and you're sixth, aren't we? Something like that. I hope that's right. If it is to end today, then get in. But if we are to have more games, I think we'll just pull away slowly. But yeah, I've been mint this season and I think Wilder should win uh, League Manager of the Year because he is better than everyone else. Lee Faulkner playing the same group. If they live in the same house, yeah, that's also a good idea. You can play in the same group. Could be a good way of getting new members involved or juniors. A big scheme that I want to see when I get back into golf or something that I'll try and implement is the father-son type thing because that's how I got into golf. It was me, my dad and my brother. We had a set between us and we all went to Oster 9 all the way down the road and that's how we got into it. So I think more of that will encourage more younger people to play and it might also encourage more dads to spend you know, it's quality time with the kids. They can see them learning. They can see them developing as little human beings. And it's it's brilliant. So that's a good idea, that, Lee. Rich Todd, what is the toughest hole on Kingswood? I think that the second is really, really hard. It's a demanding tee shot. And you have to hit it about 230, 240. And still from there, you've got an 160, 170 yard approach shot, which is not easy to, to land it on that green because it's a small green as well. So second, that is a hard hole. Look, man, don't cop out, but I'll allow it sound. <laughs> Alison Young. Hello, Alison. Hope you're okay. Enjoying the content, Jack. Best wishes from Tom. I think that's someone else on Alison's account. So thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you tuning in this evening. Joshua Rutherford, alternatively to Luke's question, would you give up some of your golfing ability to be better at football and vice versa? No, because I think if I give up some golfing ability, I still won't be as good at football as what I am at golf. So that's a that's a tricky compromise. I, I enjoy being good at golf. It's one of my favourite things. Probably the only thing that I'm good at, I would say. Um, Paul Nicholson, we've got a game in hand, so we'd be above you. Yeah, brilliant news. So as soon as this is all over, Sheffield United is going to play before us. They're going to go back above us. Brilliant. I still think we've got you. Over the course of a season, I still think we'll finish above you. Pete Marsh, what was your first set of clubs? Uh, my first set of clubs was a junior set of clubs, right? So I had uh, Don A champion, I think they were called. I was very fortunate to have like a full set so I had a full iron set of Donnelly Pro ones they were 7 99 per club I think my claim to fame is that I put a din in the middle of the face of the three iron so I know I were a ball striker from day one Paul is 777 I don't think we should play until August it's it's looking that way mate definitely uh, we, we I think the big thing that we need to measure it on is the death rate so as, while we're still seeing it creep and now it is over the 20,000 mark which is mega mega scary um, it's it's looking less and less likely that we're going to get out there early. Um, where am I going with this one? Uh, but yeah, uh, it, as soon as we see that to taper off and then decline and we get to a place when it's relatively safe to get back out there, bearing in mind we have the necessary measures in place again, then I think it'll be a good time to do it. Piers Taverner. How uh, have been making the boy watch Ryder Cup reruns? Yes, this were a big thing that I wanted Rowan to do for so long. Watching Reed and Mickelson fall apart a couple of years ago is uh, just as good as now. One thing that kept me in uh, love with golf from such an early stage was I think playing golf is obviously the biggest thing, but you need everything that goes with it. So I played Tiger Woods on the console. So when I weren't on the course, I was still playing golf. That's a big thing. And I'm watching a lot of golf. So I had uh, favourite golfers from a proper early age. It was like Mickelson. Didn't necessarily like Tiger when I was younger. I do now, though. Like Mickelson, McElroy, 
Garcia always watching out for them. And that was one of the things that as soon as I came off the golf course, my love for it was still carried on through watching it and playing Tiger Woods, like I said. So, yeah, that's mint that you've been making row watch uh, old Ryder Cup reruns. In the comments below, what's your favourite Ryder Cup? I've got an obvious one. I think it's going to be yours as well if you're uh, European like me. Up the Blades, uh, another one. Chat's full of them tonight. Sheldon Fees, hi, Jack. Hey, Shell. Hope you're all right, mate. I've been seeing you've been out on your bike quite a lot recently, so that's good. Right, keep those questions coming in. I'll answer a few more a little bit later on. Um, Paul Nicholson went to 2010 round a couple of problem with Medina. It's Medina for me, definitely. One last thing that I want to talk to you about. Uh, like I said, keep those uh, questions coming in in the chat and I'll answer them at the end of the video. Last thing I want to talk to you about tonight is my potential new set of clubs. So, as soon as we come out of this craziness, I'm thinking about upgrading my driver, irons, wedges, and putter. Putter and wedges are almost a definite. So, putter, I think I'm going to go for a Scotty Cameron Newport 2. Yes, I know, exciting stuff. Wedges, I think I'm going to go for the Ping Glide Forged. Feel is a big factor in why I'm getting these. The spec, uh, they don't do a load of grinds and stuff like that in the Ping Glide Forge. They are a little bit more expensive, granted. Uh, but the specs that I want, they do them. So that's good. And they do free personalization. That's also a big um, overriding factor as to why I want these wedges. But driver is the big one that I'm undecided on. Irons, I know what I'm getting. I'm going to get, I think, Ping I210 and Blueprint combo set. So I'm going to go four to six in the... I two tens and then seven to pitching wedge in the blueprint. So that's going to be mint. I can't wait to get them blueprints in my bag. Driver, I'm either going to go pink G400 low spinning model or I'm going to go tailor made sim. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's all else. Maybe Callaway Maverick Sub Zero. I think Maverick Sub Zero is the best that I've tested so far this year, but I do like my pings. So we shall wait and see on that one. Uh, last couple of comments then before I end this tonight. Thanks ever so much for everyone that's watched and interacted in the comments tonight. It's been absolutely mint. I've quite enjoyed this with me, Blue Moon. Worst name, beer slash best tasting. So just before I do leave, last couple of comments, if you could get us to 20 likes before we end this video, that'd be absolutely mint. We're on 16 at a minute, so I appreciate that. Um, Piers can't beat Medina, obviously my favourite by a mile. All that stuff when they were like, uh, Paddy Power sent a plane up in the skies that said do it for Seve and it was just like, oh my God. I cried like a baby when Martin came and not that put him. Paul Nicholson walked off 17 before the final put two, you're joking. So we missed the whole episode of Hunter Mayan duffing the putt, Graham McDowell being conceded is because he didn't actually knock a putt into Windrider Cup that year. The one that gets shown is him holding a monster on 16th, but he wins it on the 17th and he didn't actually knock a put in. So you missed that crazy barrage. That's unfortunate. Richard Todd, could you put scorecards outside the club, also pay online or by phone so you can just get on the course? A lot of trust, uh, but it goes both ways. I think the 16th, as you can't go left or right. Yeah, 16th is a hard hole. Uh, it's such an hard one in it because it's like I think if you do something like that where you put scorecards outside and get people to pay by fo uh, phone or however uh, other necessary means, I think you get a lot of people kind of taking the mix. So it is a consideration, but I don't know if that one would work or not. Rich nineteen eighty again thoughts on fake clubs. Have you ever seen played with them? If you go on Wish dot com, which is a very popular Chinese website, I know Rich Yours has done a video on this. Um, the fake clubs are horrendous. I once regripped a guy that had a Scotty Cameron, which was fake. I knew it was fake. I told him it was fake. He didn't believe me. It was a fake. It was a fake Scotty Cameron, and I put a new grip on it for him. So I think the grip will probably worth more than the club. Um, they will perform nowhere near as good as what the originals do, probably because the, what's the word, uh, the materials used to make your, your high, high end clubs. The reason why they cost 450 quid is because we use some proper high end stuff, uh, materials to make them. They perform nowhere near and they are prone to, to breaking and smashing. So faces cave in, shaft snap, grip split, all that kind of stuff. So although it might look like you've got a nice new tailor-made M6 fairway wood, it, it's, you're probably best off getting like a Slazenger or a Dunlop and they're horrendous as well. So the last couple of questions then, Lee Upwood. Uh, I once birdied the 14th at Ickleston, just saying. That is up there with one of the hardest holes. That's good, that, Lee. I'm proud of you, mate. But... I must tell the people, oh, my once beat Lee five and four over nine holes. I was texting him about it earlier. So, <laughs> Last question then, Richard Todd, new putter or driver? Both, as previously mentioned in this video, mate, I think I might be getting both. 
what comes first, I won't be sure. Hopefully, it's a new putter. I think I fancy the new putter more than I do fancy a new driver, and it's going to be a Scotty Cameron new port too. Bloody hell, 35 minutes nearly. Thanks ever so much for everyone that's watched tonight. It means the world. We have got to 20 likes as well, so that is mint. Thank you ever so much. Um, we might do this more often. I might start doing a Sunday night show. If you would like to see me do that, like the video, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, leave some ideas of topics that you would like me to talk about as well. This Sunday night show could catch on. I've enjoyed this tonight. I hope you have as well. Uh, I think the only thing left to say before we go is stay at home, stay safe, look after each other. And later, see you tomorrow for a new video.